Perfect. Um, well, let me just start by saying, was there anybody not energized but what Coach said at the press conference? Okay, perfect. That's exactly what I was hoping. Uh, yeah, put his name for the You're ready? Yep. Yep. What sh what, what's spot. the vertical leap? <laughs> just, yeah, yeah. You start talking 45 inch vertical leap. Uh, listen, we're excited. Obviously, this is a, a new beginning for us, so we're excited about uh, hearing our coach talk about banners and the rafters and um, and what he plans to do uh, as our new head coach and uh, lots of energy, lots of excitement, and uh, we just think that this is a moment that we're looking for everyone who is a Cal alum, a Cal fan, a Cal supporter to come together and uh, and really support our new coach, support our program, our young men, and uh, I think this is the coach that is going to bring us to the promised land. So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Mark and then certainly ready for your questions. All right, sounds good. Yeah, and I'll just reiterate kind of what I said down there. You know, as, as the conversations went on with Jim Knowlton about this program and where the program has been, which I was pretty familiar with, and the vision for the future, I, the excitement level, I got so excited. I, I am so fired up here today, um, ready to dive in and work. I've, I've been working since, you know, th since the announcement, been working in the portal, been speaking a lot to our current players already in the program and just a feeling of excitement and, and a feeling of we can do this thing. It needs to be a partnership. We're going to call on everybody, the students, the fans, the donors, administration, but we're going to do it together. We're going to do it together. And there are great things ahead. I got kind of uh, Larry Veal from uh, Channel 7 in San Francisco. Uh, two parts. First part, when you laid out the clothes today and you saw the blue and gold, what went through your mind at that point? Because those are probably colors that you have not worn a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I would say this. Y you know, it's, it's uh, I love my alma mater. I, I love where I went to school. I love um, every experience that I had. But my excitement is for Cal. My excitement is for building this into a championship program. My excitement level is the tradition of the past, we can get there and we can do it. And it's not gonna take as long as everyone thinks. I was talking to an aging friend of mine who said there are about 1,700 kids in the transfer portal, which is a mind boggling number to even ponder. How do you begin to navigate that when not only do you have to recruit your guys, you have to recruit their guys, then re-recruit your guys, then re-re-re-recruit your guys, and well, you know. I would say this, you know, it's all about personal relationships. Uh, you know, there, as there's absolutely 1,700 guys in the portal. Of those 1,700, how many are good enough to play at Cal? You know, and so, and so through personal relationships and through, r really that go back, you know, one year, two year, decades, th there's a level of trust. There's a level of trust with players, with AAU coaches, with agents. And, you know, we as a staff are a staff that have, you know, and we'll announce more on the staff later. We, we have great relationship and, and great trust level to help us navigate that. Yeah, Jeff Ferrato. Uh, Mark, can you talk about conversations you've had uh, with Jim and others in the administration about kind of specifics on NIL and what you guys are going to have at your disposal and, and how that's going to work? Yeah. First of all, good to see you again, Jeff. <laughs> long, long time. It's good to reconnect. On the NIL piece, you know, in terms of specifics, I, I would just say this. There are so many great things happening around NIL here at Cal. There's a tremendous amount of people. You know, Jim has a vision for, for this university. The NIL boards have a vision for this university. The truth of the matter is, if you are not in name, image, and likeness, it's going to be very difficult for you to compete at a high level. Th th that's the reality. Th that's the reality in, in being in basketball every day. That's the reality. And so when I saw how on board Jim is for name, image, and likeness, but done the right way, it's incredibly exciting. And do you expect it to be amped up from where it's been? Is, uh, uh, any guarantees, any uh, commitments from them on, on what it will be going forward? Yeah, you know, I, I think it's, it's more about <coughs> the process. It, you know, when you think about the process of 
the excitement around the donor base for NIL, we've seen some incredibly exciting things happen. And, and Jim will have more to announce on that in the, you know, it, it, as time passes. But y you're going to see, uh, I, I believe that Cal is going to be one of the national leaders in NIL, um, including, you know, what was said earlier in the sense that it, it is never pay to play. NIL is not pay to play. It's name, image, and likeness. But what I like about Cal is these individuals that are running the collective, they're talking about community service. They're talking about giving back to the community. And that is one of the most exciting things. Mark over here. By the way, the weather down here is great. <laughs> anyway, hey, this is one of my go-tos. Okay, let's say, let's say I'm a, a five-star guard. I got handles, okay? I yeah. got... I got Coach Haas, Haas calling me in like 20 minutes, but I'm taking your call first. Yeah. And I'm thinking about coming to Cal. Yeah. Uh, when somebody says, well, that's a Mark Matson coach team, what does that mean? Yeah, what, what that means is, is a few things, a few different things. First of all, we are going to have a family environment here as a team. Um, we are going to have a family environment. The student athlete experience is incredibly important to Cal, and it is incredibly important to me. You know, I believe that if players are happy, I I if they feel welcomed, if they, if they feel joy when they go on the court, they're going to be a much better version of themselves. Style of play. I, I, I want to play up-tempo. I want to play up-tempo. There's going to be a lot of structure, but there's also going to be a lot of freedom. Y you know, you can – there's a saying in the NBA. Y you know, in the NBA, some coaches have sets. Some coaches have more of a free-flowing offense. But one thing you hear a lot, especially towards young players in the NBA, is – don't be a robot. Don't be a robot. And so I, wanna, I want our players to know the offense, of course, but to be able to use their talents and abilities when they see an opening. Kevin McHale had a great line. He drew up a play one time when I was playing for him in Minnesota. And, and I think it was Latrell Sprewell broke off the play and got a layup. And so the next day in film or either at halftime, Kevin McHale said, guys, at any time, if you can, if you, can you know, take candy from a baby, you do it and you go get the layup. And so the, those are some of the ideas, some of the principles that we've really been preaching um, in, in our coaching career. So I'm running your offense. What, what, what are you demanding of me when I go out there to make plays? Unselfishness. I'm demanding unselfishness. Y you know, we want guys to shoot the best shots. Shoot the best shots. You know, some of the worst shots are the contested off the dribble fadeaway shots. And, of course, we see the pros do it. But the, even the pros don't always make the contested off the bounce fade away. You know, so good, better, best. You know, make your teammate better. Care more about the man next to you than about your own stats. Okay, I'm Inman Barry, and he's your Mark, um, when you say it's not going to take as long as everybody thinks, uh, why and how? Well, y you know, that comes back to the idea of vision, the vision that Jim has, the vision that I have, you know, the, the, the timelines that, that, that we've discussed. You know, the transfer portal is a great thing when it's all said and done because what it allows, it allows players flexibility to move. If they're not happy, they can move. Um, and by the same token, as was said, with 1,700 players in the portal, there's a lot of players that are looking for a home. And so if you can bring in three or four key pieces, there, there, there's several really good players, really talented players. There's a group of really talented players already in the program. So now you add three or four key players from the portal. You add some players that are already in the program from an existing standpoint. And then you bring in a couple of young guys and you uh, make some tweaks. Good things can happen quickly. Hi, Coach Chris Alvarez from ABC7. Congratulations. Welcome back to the Bay. Thank who you. who were your biggest, when you're learning the coach, who do you kind of take your game after, your coaching style after? Was there anybody in particular? You obviously have been coached by some of the greats. Anybody uh, stand out in your mind that you kind of took a little bit from? Yeah, it's, it's a combination of a lot of different coaches. Um, I feel very fortunate to have played for some really, not only great coaches, but great people. You know, a conversation with Phil Jackson last week is, Fresh on the mind, b because Phil is someone who cares deeply about basketball, but he cares deeply about people. He and I talked about the Cal job, and you know he, he gave me some advice. Um, 
You know, he talked about some things that, that, that were important. But then he talked about how he was doing personally. He asked about how I was doing personally. I, I think sometimes that's lost, not, not only in sports, but just in life. It, you know, there's a human side to this game. And that's where I think Phil was extremely unique. He, he brought in this human, I mean, he brought in the spiritual side. We did meditations as a team in the locker room. You know, eyes closed, tongue on the roof of the mouth. I mean, I remember it like it was yesterday. And, and the room would get quiet. And you would be there in the room together. And he used to call it, you know, he used to say, we are conspiring together through breath. You know, and it's, it, it was kind of an Eastern approach to, you know, basketball is not just putting the ball in the basket. It's not just X's, X's and O's. It's about people. You know, and Phil was a master of that. Yeah, Jake Curtis, Cal Sports Report. Uh, how do you think up-tempo style will affect recruiting in terms of transfer portal and high school kids? Good to see you again, too, Jake. <laughs> um, very few players want to play slow. V very few players want to play slow. You know, even, even as you look at the recruiting board, as you look at the available players, you know, I, I don't want to recruit slow players. Y you're going to need some big guys. I don't want slow big guys. Because if you have a slow big guy, it kills your transition defense. Uh, it kills your defense. And also, it, conversely, if you have a fast big guy, it opens up layups and wide open threes in the corner. And so speed, decision-making, tempo are things that I'm excited to recruit and things I'm excited to implement. Uh, Josh Zubow, Associated Press. Mark, what, what, you coached a, lot, a while in, in the pros uh, with the Lakers and D-League stuff. What brought you back to college? And when you came back and took the job at Utah Valley, was getting to this level, was that – did you have a like, set of goals to say, hey, I want to get to – you know, power five level, what, what brought you back to college? Yeah, you know, I think, um, first of all, I think the NBA is a tremendous, I love the NBA. I love the players in the NBA. Um, you know, in the NBA, you might be coaching someone that's 35 years old, where, you know, you can definitely have an impact from a basketball perspective, but it's exciting for me to, this idea of mentorship, because I, I've been fortunate to have so many amazing mentors. You know, I mentioned even at the high school level, I mentioned John Rayner, my high school coach. I mentioned Jim Barron. And, and it's, you know, I was a young guy. Uh, I was a sophomore in high school. I was trying to find my way. And, and here's Jim Barron's, who played under Pete Newell, who just was kind of the, you know, every staff has, has the one guy that just has a soft touch, <coughs> a, a really nice personality that kind of can help bring a young guy along. And, and really the same thing in college. I mean, th these kids go through a lot of, great things and they also have challenges they also have challenges you know just in the four years at utah valley th there were times when players would come into my office and share really personal challenges not related to basketball and that's where the student athlete experience comes in because you know sometimes they need someone to step up and help them help them navigate a difficult situation because we all have difficult situations and that's something i'm most excited about in terms of being in the college game Of the San Francisco Chronicle. Mark, congrats. And uh, I'll ask the mundane question. Didn't get the name of your newborn. Yeah. What's yeah, her, her name is Anastasia Ruth Madsen. And Anastasia, the typical spelling? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, one N. And, yeah, one N. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's blue and gold here today, and I understand yeah. how you can be proud of your past and yeah. look to the future. Your future, say January or February of next year, you're going to take the Cal Bears to Naples Pavilion. Yeah. What's that going to be like? No, I mean, it, it's, and I, understand, I, I absolutely understand the question. And I would say this. It's, of course, probably the night before, I'm going to have some emotions, you know, going back to a place where I spent time. But, uh, you know, the season, the, num the number of games for us next year, hopefully we're playing 38 games. And so that's two games out of, out of 38. And anybody that, you know, as you guys get to know me, you, you'll see that when I dive into something, I give full commitment, absolute full commitment, full excitement. And, and guys, I'm incredibly excited about this opportunity here, about this opportunity here, you know, for a lot of reasons. Y you know, just I see the potential. It's exciting for me, you know, to 
when it's all said and done, I grew up with a lot of Cal grads as, as my high school teachers. Some of my high school teammates went to Cal. You know, a guy like Tucker Callaway, who I played with in, in, in high school, he came to Cal, he loved it. You know, I, I've stayed in touch with him and his family over the years. And so it's just, it's really fun and exciting for me to be here. Michael Duca, Bear Insider. Coach, who on the current roster are you excited to coach from a developmental point of view? Yeah, I'm excited about a lot of players on the current roster. And I met with, um, I met with the team before we had the conference downstairs on the court, and it was a great meeting. It was a great meeting. Look, some of the guys are in the portal, y you know, and, and so my job, and I told them, I said, hey, workouts are going to start either Tuesday or, th or Wednesday, depending on, I'm going to call my wife later today and see how she's doing. <laughs> but I also want to meet with every player individually. And every player's pathway is different, y you know, and I just want to meet with every single player, see exactly what their goals and aspirations are, and tell them what I see in their game. I've studied a lot of film on, on each player. I've watched some of your games live just from the past season. It, you know, as a coach, you spend a lot of time in a hotel room, so you always try to pick games you want to watch. And so just excitement about a lot of different players on the roster, both on the court and off. Yes, sir. Ryan Young, Golden Bear Report. Mark. What's your across-the-board assessment of the state of the program as you take it over, and how did you go about evaluating what you were walking into? Yeah. You know, the first thing I looked at is, is um, obviously the record was a, t it was a tough record last year. Okay, and y you look at all the games. You look at the scores. Not every, not every game was a blowout. You know, and so, number one, there, there's upside right there. N number two, were there a couple of injuries? Yes. You know, so now you get some guys healthy, you know, <coughs> tweak a few things in-game. And now, you know, that's more wins. And then on top of it, yes, um, absolutely, you need to bring in a, a few key pieces, a few key pieces out of the transfer portal. And so you really look at the combination of, of all of those different things. And I'm, I'm telling you, this thing can turn around very, very quickly, and it will. Hi, Don Shenham, um, right for California. Uh, throughout this process, we heard a lot about the institutional challenges. Um, is there anything specifically, whether it's admission standards, whether it's factory facility that, that is, I mean, larger in your mind than others and uh, that you're going to continue working with the uh, administration and athletic department with? That's a great point. Uh, that's a great point. You know, I think <coughs> um, this idea of institutional challenges is, is a narrative that has been out there. It's, it's a narrative that has been discussed publicly. But I think the narrative that has not been discussed enough publicly is the great opportunity of this program or the, the great resources that this program already has. Um, you know, in talking to Jim, he, he addressed you know, s some of the issues, but as he and I have talked, he's, he's willing and he's already stepped up to provide every resource necessary. Um, you know, am I a guy that says, you know, we have to, we, we need X, Y, and Z immediately. No, no, that's not my personality because I believe that with hard work, a lot of these things can be taken care of themselves by diving straight into it. Mark, you guys have been already mentioned. Uh, just tell us what your message to your, your new players was when you met with them earlier. You know, the, the, the message this morning was really a message of, hey, we're going to create a family environment. You know, and, and th th that's something that, that by itself, the teams where I've had that family environment, let me give you some, some examples. When I got to Minnesota, Flip Saunders invited me to, me to the house multiple times for get-togethers. Y you know, th that's a meaningful relationship to me. Y you know, um, family environment. I told the guys, we're going to win. We're going to win. But, you know, Every player needs to be the best version of themselves. It has to be willing to put in the work to win. And so we, we talked about that. We had some laughs. We had some jokes. And, and, and then we went around, and everybody said a few words about themselves. Uh, because, you know, you're always in an ongoing process of getting to know one another in any team setting. It doesn't matter if you've been on a team with someone for five years. You're always still in the process of getting to know someone better. I, I'm, I'm absolutely open to um, every discussion with, 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 with every player. Um, obviously, some players are graduating. 
Some players are in the portal. And so that, that's why the first step for me is going to be sitting with every player individually, assessing their graduation track, assessing if a player's in the portal, what are they looking for, and then having honest conversations about roles, about roles. And so th th that's an ongoing discussion. And I'll have more on that. Like if you ask me that question in, f in four weeks, I'll have much more information. Aaron Wilson with Crime 4. Um, obviously, you've had a lot of success in this game on just about every level of basketball. Some undesirable results with the Cal Bears last season. And you're homegrown here. Is there any pressure on you personally to be the guy that restores this program? Or do you feel like most athletes, you know, we take it a, a game a day. Is there pressure there? I, I think in any, in any competitive situation, there's absolutely pressure. And I wouldn't want it any other way. You know, we, we, just, we just played in the NIT Final Four. And we played against a great team. We lost in overtime. There was pressure on the players, on both sides. There was pressure on the coaches. Um, you know, I, I tend to focus more on the opportunity side of it and the excitement side of it. Because wh what I've found from my personal, just in my personal life, especially in terms of competition, I if I try to control every single thing I can control, work ethic, preparation, personal relationships, if I give it my all, the results follow. The results follow. And so th there's absolutely a competitive pressure, and I'm excited to embrace it. Coach, you have a new Cal jersey, but you also have a really cool new toddler jersey. What was that moment like for you? Was that a surprise? And what does that kind of talk? You're talking about family. So yeah. what, does that, what did that moment mean to you? Well, it meant a lot. It meant a lot. You know, my, I, I live for my kids. I live for my kids, you, you know. And, you know, it's, it's just to see that my family has been embraced here at Cal already is an exciting thought for me. And I felt that from Jim from day one. Um, you know, when I met with the players, I shared some basketball things, and I shared some personal family things also, you know, because um, in a team, you get to know each other so intimately well. I'll be spending more time with our Cal players during some times of the year than I will with my own kids and my own wife. And so you get to know each other. You build deep bonds. I mean, to this day, you know, I can pick up the phone and, and call old teammates from high school, college, or the NBA, and they're picking up because we spent those time, that, that time together. Dave, how you doing? <laughs> Dave. I'm, I'm still doing. <laughs> you look good. You look good. You need glasses. <laughs> no, I don't, but I actually do. I actually do. Mark, you talked about up tempo and three or four key players. Are you looking for Mark Madsons? You need players who are, <laughs> tough, who are tough defenders yeah. and set a mood on the court. You're being kind, Dave. You're, you're being really kind to me. So, so thank you for the kind words. I'll say this. You, you know, in, in, in studying the analytics, one of the, one of the areas that stands out, and you guys know it, is the offense. You, you know, so we need immediate help offensively. And, and that is a priority in all the phone calling that we've done in the portal. You know, um, that being said, th there, there are certain key guys in the program right now that have great offensive skills. You know, and, and you put it all together Defense is absolutely going to be a key. Defense and rebounding is a huge part to winning championships. You know, you, you, if possible, it's great if you can switch one through five, for example. Can't always do that. So then, can you switch one through four? And can you have a specialty coverage for your five man? You know, and so there's, there's so much opportunity out there, both with existing homegrown players in the Cal program and also in the portal. And we're going we're gonna to really focus on both. And in three or four weeks, you know, we will have more to report on. Jim, can you share how Mark first came on your radar and then how it eventually crystallized that he was the right guy for this? Well, I think he was on our radar, you know, weeks before the season ended. And, uh, you know, as we continued to do our homework, he rose to the top faster and faster. And I think just everything you saw today, was why he was so interesting to us. And, uh, you know, when we finally got to the Zoom calls, uh, we were absolutely blown away. And then when we got in person and spent three or four hours with him, we said, this is the next coach at Cal. And so it felt right. Um, 
we want to win the right way. We want to do it the right way, but we want to, just as someone said, knock someone down and help them back up. We, we want to be that team you don't want to play, and we want to be competitive. And so he brings every one of those uh, while also being just an incredible human being. So we're excited, and uh, yeah, we're excited that we got our man.